So Microsoft just released brand new updates for Excel, Word, PowerPoint, OneNote, and Outlook for every Microsoft 365 er who is on the semi-annual channel, which is a lot of people. So if you're one of those people, then you would have just released awesome new updates. I'm going to show you those in this video. Some really cool stuff like having a cell with an image inside it or being able to see changes cell by cell that have been made to your Excel workbook whilst you've been away. Or for example, in Word, having a high contrast mode, having a smiley or thumbs up emoji to an email message. My name is David and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams, Outlook, Word, etc. If you love tech and you're using it a lot at the workplace, then check out my other videos. So let's get started. So kicking off with Excel, which has the most updates, including this image inside the cell that we'll get to, we have a formula here equals that cell. And if I want to copy this, and then I want to paste it. Now, you've always been able to paste it either like that with the formula included, or like that with the value. And that would give me the number 34. But now what you can do is you can press Control Shift V and get paste values with a shortcut, which is awesome. Going to sign a comment. So if you right click and you choose new comment, then I'm going to say my name. That's been around for a while. And what you can now do is you can assign it and then press that. And then they will get this that they can clear off and they will get an email notification about it as well that I'll see in a second. So you also have data type conversion. So historically, I'm sure this has happened to you. If you write in a phone number like that, then Excel will remove the zero and make it into a number, which is really annoying. Also, if you write like seven APR, it will convert that to a date, which might not be what you want. And if you write a very, very large number, then it will convert that to exponential format. What you can now do is you can turn all of those off. Now you do have to manually do this, which means fortunately a lot of people won't know that, but if you go to file options and then data, then you have all of this automatic data conversion. And if you untick that, then it will say remove leading zeros, untick that scientific notation, convert numbers, and continuous letters and numbers to a date. So I'll untick that, and now I can write my phone number. I can do 8 ma, and I can write in a number like that. And it will keep that number there. All right, workbook links. So if you have a file that's linked to another file, then in the data tab, you used to have the edit links option. Now it's called workbook links. So to show you, if I write equal to, and if I'm in another file like this, it will show it to me like this. But now I have workbook links, which looks a bit different and also takes across fewer things. So it's a lot more robust. If you have charts and conditional formatting, it doesn't take that across to the new workbook. And you can choose here whether to break it or change source links, etc., etc. refresh. So awesome new update is in the review tab, you have show changes. This works if your document is saved on the cloud shop on your OneDrive. As you can see, it's got all of these changes cell by cell, how it's worked out. And if you click on it, it will take you to that cell. If I was to make a new change, so for example, I'm going to write here equals to this cell. It will now say see new changes. If I click on that, it will update with it. So we'll show you like moved cells, merging cells, there you go, moved. And sometimes if there are lots, you can expand for what it's done the whole time. You can also get to it by selecting a region and right click and show changes. They will show you just for those cells for that range. You can change the filter here to the entire worksheet or clear filter for the entire workbook. You can also get to it by right clicking a sheet and show changes, which is pretty awesome. You next have a few more updates. So get data from dynamic array. So a dynamic array is a formula in Excel that returns multiple cells. So one is for example, equals sequence. And I can say I want three rows and four columns. And I can have my formula like this, which is really great, but it's dynamic. So if this changes to six, now this one grows and these other ones are basically the same grow as well. So what you can now do though, is you can select your dynamic array, which has this blue outline around it. 
and you can go to the data tab and choose from table or range. So this opens up the Power Query Editor, which is an awesome thing. If you're not currently using Power Query, you are missing out for sure. It will really speed up the way that you work. So I can do things like I can select some cells and go to transform, and then I can choose merge columns. And, and I'm gonna just press okay. And then I'm going to make this into a number format. Perfect. So I'm going to close and load. Then it will load a new worksheet with my dynamic array. But this is dynamically linked to this number. So if I change this to three, then all of these will change. And here, if I refresh, that will now change to fewer ones. So I have another video on Power Query. If this is something you're interested in learning, highly advise it if you don't already use it. Next, we have Office Scripts. So Office Scripts is kind of the successor to VBA. In the new Automate tab, you have all of this and you can write a new script manually. You can run your scripts or you can record actions using kind of like a more modern macro recorder. They uses a different scripting language. So here, for example, I'm going to make that yellow. I'm going to here equal to a cell. I'm going to add a filter. So over here, and then I'm going to actually filter it for something. And it will keep doing these or remove my filter using my shortcut control shift out. I can then stop. And then here I have my script. I can rename it. And this is actually stored outside of the workbook. So you can reuse this across other workbooks. You can also reuse this in Excel online and Excel for Mac, which you can't do in an easy way with the other ones. It's a useful thing to do. If you want to know how VBA and Office Scripts compare, then I have another video about it. And also you can't do record relative references with the recorder in the Automate tab for the moment. Even though if you go to the new script, you can use relative referencing if you can script it yourself. Equals image, this is pretty cool. So if you have a URL, which is a link to an image, you can write in a cell equals image. And then you have source, all the other stuff is optional. So I'm just like that. And this will give me an image of what that URL is. You can also use these in various different ways. So for example, you can use it for a sum if, you can use it for a V lookup, for an X lookup. It will just look up based on what this value is. You can also use it in pivot tables. Filters, something that you should know is um, the old text. So the second input is old text. So I usually like to do that because it means that I can use it in filters. So if I add filters, control shift L, and now I filter it, it will show me the name of that person. However, if I was to not include the filter, then this is just going to show me this one that says picture. So it's not very useful. The other things you can do are sizing. So I'm going to do that one. And then sizing is going to be, uh, I can do fill cell and then it will expand it. However, big that cell is, which I usually don't like doing. Or in sizing, you can do custom size, which is three tab or number three. And then you can choose like, you know, 800 and 400. And we'll show you a really, really big one. I was to expand it. It can show you how that looks. Yeah. So usually I would just keep it with the original dimensions, but the alt text is useful. You can also use this to generate QR codes. So here, for example, you can have any URL and then this will generate a QR code. I have another video where I talk about how to make these. Um, and I'll leave the code that you need, which is this in the description of this video as well. So if, for example, I have uh, www.facebook.com, then if I drag down this formula, it's sometimes going to show you the block thing, but usually for the QR code, I've found that it works. If it does show you the block thing, I'm going to show you how to tackle that because unfortunately it happens too much. Um, things like char axes and slices, you can't use this with images, even if it's linked to the cell. We need to do is insert icons and then just add them manually yourself, which is not ideal, but that's how it is. 
So what happens if you get these blocked errors or also if you get the connection errors? Let me show you. So over here I have blocked. Sometimes it will say hashtag connect as well. And it's kind of a similar thing from my experience if you're connected to the internet. So if you want to open this in Excel online, because that's the only place where you'll be able to fix this. To do that, save it on the cloud and go to file and then info and then open file location. Then if you click on that, it should eventually open up with these that are blocked. If these say field, then you might need to just click in it and press enter. But what you want to do is deal with this pop-up that says some were turned off because they require connection to Excel data. Just click turn on images and there you go. And then you have your images. It's kind of annoying. I don't know why it does it like that because the Power BI equivalent and the Google Sheets equivalent will just give you these images. But this one will only work in Excel online for now at the time of making this video. So those are the brand new features for Excel, but let's look at the features that are new for other apps. So here we are in Word, and let's say that you want to change the color of things. You've always been able to do this, but now what you can do is high contrast only. So if you want to make this clear for people with visual impairments, you can turn this on and make sure that you only pick the colors that are relevant. You can still get your greens and your dark reds and your dark yellows and stuff if you want to keep with that and purples but it's going to avoid you choosing something like that that's going to be very difficult for people to read uh, you also have in track changes in the review tab you have just mine so if you just want to track your changes useful if you're collaborating with a document like this uh, you have the same kind of features with the comments that you had before so new comments you can also assign a comment to someone and another thing that you can do which is pretty cool is you can select some cells and you can right click and choose review selection and editor and it will just review the, sele the selection not your whole document in microsoft editor which is the new version of spell check and then lastly a very small one if you do use inking in the draw tab you have a ruler so if you have this you can now kind of draw and make sure that you draw in a straight line like that. I don't really use drawing, uh, useful, more useful for people with iPads and things, but yeah, that is the ruler is something you can turn on or off and then I can just delete that. So that's words. Let's keep going. So I'll look next and here you have the thing that I assigned. <laughs> so the task that I assigned. Uh, that I showed you in Excel, and I can go to add comment or go to comments as well. The other place that this will pop up in this new notifications pane here. So here you have a notification, which is essentially someone reacting to an email, which is also new. Um, and then also people at mentioning you and people tagging you in a comment on Word, PowerPoint, or Excel. Uh, you can also customize how this looks and other things like reactions and things like that as well. So yeah, dismiss all, we'll get rid of it. Uh, I don't really find I use this that often because I don't use that feature that often. So I did talk about reacting to a message. This is also new, so you can thumb up. This is kind of like what you can do with WhatsApp. And the person will see how many have reacted to their message like that. You also have try the new Outlook. So if you click on this, then it will switch it to essentially what is similar to the web version of Outlook. So that means that a lot of the features that you have been using on desktop might not be there, but also a lot of new features that have never been on, X on Outlook desktop will be included there. So um, there is a big change. One of my most trending videos at the moment on my YouTube channel is the classic Outlook versus a new Outlook because a lot of people are angry that it took away some things. Microsoft is saying that this is the classic Outlook is going away in September-ish of this year. So it, it might be good to get used to it, I'm really going to miss it because there are loads of things I love about Classic Outlook. But um, now you can toggle it on or off. That's what's new. Next, we have PowerPoint. And PowerPoint has very, very few things. The only things that have been new are around accessibility. So if you go to the Review tab, you have Check Accessibility. This is not new. This has always been there. But um, in the Accessibility tab, you have a couple of new things. So Inspect Without Color, there you can see how it looks for someone who is colorblind. You also have the ability for an image to mark it as decorative, which means that it won't pop up as an error from lack of alt text. 
So if you have an image that you don't want it to have all text, then it does generate them. So if there is nothing there, then it's going to tell me that I need to uh, review something like that. But if I don't want to review that, I can just mark as decorative and then that clears that error. This one as well, mark as decorative or say you're okay with the automated one and they will clear those errors. And the last one is if you do have a table in your PowerPoint and you don't have a header row, then you can enter a header row directly from here uh, without having to go through the table menu. Last but not least, one note. So in the draw tab, you have automatic shapes. If you turn that on, then start drawing and it will make that automatic or also works, for example, with a rectangle. But you don't get it immediately, then just wait and then it will usually get it or a circle like that as well. Back to my regular selection and I can move these or adjust them as need be. So uh, a couple of other things, you can have your view on the left hand side. So in the view tab, you can go to tabs, layout and choose horizontal tabs. This is the traditional one, but you can also change now to vertical tabs, which is more akin with probably what we're used to in terms of managing of things like that. If you choose pictures, you can have from camera, hello, and then you can take photo and it will put that directly there. Not my greatest work, but that's what you can do. Great. So back to Excel, just to show you the closing things. So what I do is I keep tabs on what is new in Excel. Quite literally, I keep these things, there are tabs. If I customize the ribbon and I have something that is in pipeline. So here is all the things I've shown you that are new in the semi-annual channel. There are loads of other features that are in the current channel or the monthly enterprise channel or the beta channel that will eventually come to the semi-annual, but not there. Um, and then also I keep tabs of what's new across all Microsoft 365, Excel Online only, uh, as well as 2021, Excel 2019, 16, 13, etc. But Excel is adding so many new things all the time compared to how much it did every three years, about 10 years ago. So lastly, how do you know which version you have? And if you're not seeing these updates, what do you do? You go to file and then account. And here it should say a few things. So firstly, Microsoft 365 Apps for Enterprise. If you don't see this, then you don't get Excel regular updates. If you see 2021, 2019, 2016, then that means that your updates, they're always going to be static for the most part. Next up, you're going to see here about Excel you're going to see the release cycle that you have. So I have the beta channel, which means I get the releases before they hit the mainstream, but you should see semi-annual channel, in which case this video does apply to you. Although all of these features are available to the current and every other channel in Microsoft 365 because the semi-annual channel is the last one. Now I have version 2403, which means the year 2024, 03 is the month of March, if you have the semi-annual channel, then the most up-to-date one should be 2308, August 2023. It updates every six months. So the updates are in January and July for the update that happened five months prior. So the next update for the semi-annual channel will be in July 2024 for the version 2402, which is February 2024. If it's showing, for example, 2302, then what you need to do is go to update options and choose update now. Um, or maybe your internal IT department is the only one with that power, in which case speak to them to get all these cool new updates. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. My name has been David Van Eyman. I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams, Word, Outlook. If you're using Tickle the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So check out my other videos if you like what you see. Thanks for watching.